The Fontanellus fin is another fly like the Parmacini bell meant to represent the fin of a brook trout, which was used as bait uh, by fishermen pre-fly fishing. Um, the, this fly was invented by Phil Armstrong, and uh, it has a closely related cousin, the Bergman Fontanalis, named for Ray Bergman. The term Fontanalis comes from uh, Salvolinus Fontanalis, which is the Latin for brook trout. This hook is a Mustad 3399 wet fly hook. You can use any wet fly hook. This is a number six. Um, typically, these flies would have been tied anywhere from, depending on the size of the brook trout, you know, six to 12. And, uh, I'm using white thread here because the tail is white. And this is a Benecki 12 aught thread. Uh, this is just some white hackle. It's a cock spade hackle, to be more precise. Tying it in, binding it down. I always trim the butts at an at an angle. On this fly, there, this fly has a wool body, so I don't have to do a lot of body building. I always do some, but you can actually create the taper with the the wool itself as you wrap it. So. You don't have to do much ahead of time. And this is flat gold tinsel, tying it in on the far side of the hook. In this case, it's metal. If you use um, mylar, tie the gold side against the hook shank. Just binding it down and taking the thread the whole length of the whole length of the body here. I'm waxing the thread now in preparation to uh, dub wool onto the thread. Most wool bodies were dubbed. They would shred the the wool in their fingers. This is uh, uh, this is, I believe, some cruel um, it's not exactly yarn. it's it's just it it, it comes in a bag like like dubbing. Um, I got it from uh, William Bailey in Fort Wayne, Indiana, who makes and dyes various wool wool products, uh, pig's wool, all sorts of cool stuff, using very old techniques. Makes a great wax. He's a master dyer. I've sped up some of these dubbing sequences um, in case you've already had your nap. What I'm trying to do here, I'm, 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 I, I like to dub very finely and then if I want to build up portions of the body, I just do more wraps in that area. So it, it takes me a while. 
but it's all about get, getting the shape I want. And I'm going to wrap the traditional five turns of ribbing. And when you wrap ribbing over wool, over a wool body, um, use, use considerable tension. As you, as you wrap, it helps the uh, helps the tinsel stay put. Changing to black thread. This again is Beneki twelve watt. I really like this stuff it's very strong for its diameter this is a hackle that i've already folded once and messed with a little bit This is furnace called for in the recipe. This is a, an old whiting hen neck. Um, the, the old whiting head necks um, were, were almost closer to cock hackle. Uh, it has to do with the uh, genetic strains that they use at whiting. And Honestly, I didn't like it. I I like Mets better. It's closer to what I consider hen hackle. There, I I lost tension on the bobbin, and uh, it's not the end of the world if that happens. But you'll you'll see. I wind up with instead of being able to just neatly trim this stem off, I've got all kinds of strays here. And um, I'm I'm going to pluck them out off camp, off camera with uh, tweezers. Here I've I've started pulling the hackle down. Gathering it into a beard, which was standard operating procedure back in the Bergman era, which was 30s, 40s, 50s. Ray Bergman was a true fisherman in every sense of the word. He, like Francis Francis, he fished bait, spinning, used a spinning rod, every, you, you name it, he, he did it. He just liked to fish. There was no pretense with Ray Bergman. I've got a, a, a left slip here, orange slip, and uh, I wanted to show you this. I just married about four or five strands of black onto it. And I'm going to strip them all out but one. This just is an easy way to do a single strand. Very difficult to, to marry a single strand. They they'll flip on you. And uh, it, 
It doesn't always pan out. It's doable. I've done it. I've done it many times, actually. But typically, I'll do two or three strands, marry that, and then just strip out what I don't want. I'm doing the same thing with the white here. And yeah, you, you waste some materials, but it's <laughs> you're going to waste a lot of time the other way. So that's the far wing made of lefts. The near wing is made of rights. And uh, duck quills is what we're using, dyed duck quills for, for this fly. You can also use dyed goose quills. They're maybe a little, a little more difficult to work with, but they have more length, which is nice. Got the wing on there. It's it's not perfect, but we'll go with it. In order to get a decent sized head, I'm just not doing any more turns. I'll uh, I'll do that when I go back up. These are some new scissors I just got, and I, they're almost worthless. Really don't like these things. They're a, a little bit too light, and you really you really can't get in there. They weren't expensive. We've got a recalcitrant fiber here, and we're going to go Old Testament on it. If thine eye offends thee, pluck it out. Sometimes I just feel like I'm at war with a fly. Ron Lucas told me once that he was never going to let a feather beat him. I love that. Do a whip finish. This thing will be pretty much done. These flies are not difficult. The uh, I've done the Bergman Fontanalis in the past, and I'll probably do a, a video of it one of these days. Phil Armstrong invented that one as well. And here's the finished product. Really does look like a brook trout fin. If you've caught a decent sized brook trout, especially in the fall, they their fins look just like this. Very cool fly. Have fun with this one.